Shalom family, look, look, guess who I'm here with? Fat Soul from DC, you guys. You see the barbecue sauce? Fat Soul's mama sauce. Yes. DC's original red sauce. And what size is that? This is a half gallon. Okay. And this one is a 16 ounce. This sell for eight dollars. This sell for seventeen. We also offer a gallon at twenty-eight dollars. And we're gonna um, debone the turkey. Today. Yes. I got um, forty plus years of experience in the kitchen. And uh, I'm retired, so uh, I do this on the side. <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> Thank it's, you. It's a wonderful sauce. Anybody uses it, they always tell me the same thing. They put it on everything. We just got to the Okay. Now. Oh, my website is fatsouls.com. All right. That's all. Right. In the word sauce.com. All right. Thank you. So I had so I had to take advantage of of fats because we're up here in the mountains, and um, I bought a turkey up here. But the last time I tried to cut a turkey, I demolished it. So. Not only does Fats make barbecue sauce, he's also a chef. So he's going to show us how to debone a turkey. All right. So the only thing that I'm negative with is gloves. Because I'm very, I, like, I love to cook, but I also love to push, um, you know, personal hygiene and food safety. And a lot of different things. I was explaining earlier when you, Cooking in the, at home and not in the professional, oh, man, you got every professional kitchen. You got water just, running on food. I got food at home. You don't let that water back up into your fridge. Because you have to tighten it up. Okay. And he said he, he, he doesn't have what he needs because I asked him on the fly. So, you know, who who walk around with apron and gloves? <laughs> so, yeah, but he's willing to but, but show us. About next time you see me. <laughs> I'm going to be fully dressed. <laughs> Chef. Okay. So we're going to take this, this bird apart. And she actually don't want no bones. So this is a wing. I'm going to take the wings off. I'm going to come back to them later. Because the wings and the legs are kind of tedious. And I'm cutting this out for her to can and the job. So I can leave the pieces Pretty, pretty much um, a good size, and she can always cut it down to what she like. As she, okay. As she can do yes, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he doesn't have his chef's knife. This is the house yeah. knife. <laughs> Most of us have the house knife, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the last time I cut a turkey up, I demolished it. I mean, demolished. we couldn't tell what was what. So I was like, okay, I'm going to ask this chef to help me out on my next turkey. Some people may take this down the front. But I like going down the back to start. Because you can go down either side of the, of the backbone and just go it down. What happened? Okay, here we go. Okay, coming on down to the butt. This is the butt right here. That stuff is good for any kind of soups. If you cut this right here, drop it in, it'll give you a lot of flavor. Mm, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's just as good as um, when you're making stock and stuff. That's just as good as a net and the bones. Okay. Now we got through. So I'm going to flip this over now. As you can see. There's another leg and thigh. And this one actually got the back on it, so I'm gonna take this off later. Get this 
smaller knife here because this breast, and this bird is still a little frozen. But when you're boning the, uh, the breast, you see how it went down one side of the bone? And I put the knife on that side of the bone and I just slide it down. You got a pretty sharp knife. The meat will just fall off. And you just follow, you just follow the knife, we'll follow the bone actually. Until it comes off to the end. You want to get all the bone off. And what we gonna do with that bone fast? Oh, we're gonna take that bone and make some stock. Make some nice chicken stock. You can use for soup, you can use for gravies, you can use for um, all sorts of different things. And I know my mama and the first chef I cooked under, when we use a piece of meat, we use every part of the meat. There's nothing that we don't use. Mm -hmm. I I'm can... doing the same thing on this side. Mm -hmm. Just lay, run the knife down the bone until it runs all the way out. I can see me taking them bones with some celery yeah. and some onions oh, yeah. and, and throw some um, rice. You got a nice um, broth going there on, go. rice or some wide noodles. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Or even some uh, now, there was pastry. A time when we used to do a whole lot of chicken, like cases of them. Cut them up, just take the, the breast off, and we used to take these bones. Where are the bones at? We used to take these bones like this, with not much meat on it, season it up in flour, and drop it in the fat fry. You watch folks just <laughs> eat, <laughs> eat, try to get the meat off the bone like eating crabs. <laughs> yeah. But you get filled up too. Nothing goes to waste. Nothing goes to waste. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm taking this bone off, this, off the back. Okay, I need an area. This is going to be my area for the bone and the fats. So, now this bone right here, this is the wishbone. Do anybody, do you guys know about the wishbone? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know we used to... Um... Tell me what you used to do. Okay, Did, okay. Tell me what we used to do. Okay, this is this is what we used to do when, when I was a, a kid over 50 years ago. Let me tell you what we used to do. Once we got that wishbone and we used to pull it apart, uh -huh. and whoever got the widest part of that right. wishbone, mm -hmm. we will make a wish with that. With right. that. <laughs> exactly. And then after that, we used to take it and put it over the door, door seal. Mm -hmm. We ain't know back then it was making roaches better. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that was part of the, the tradition. Mm -hmm. You know, whoever beat and make, get, make their wish for their wish to come true, they would take the bone and put it over top of the door seal. I've never heard that one before. Yeah. Wow. I know. <laughs> it get deep sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Okay, now I'm, I'm finishing this bone off. Basically, I'm going to leave a little meat on there for the stock. Now this right here is part of the back, and they got a part they call the oysters. You said oysters? It's called oysters. It's okay. in the center of the back, mm -hmm. back of the um, chicken or turkey. Mm -hmm. Going up the back on each side is a little piece, a little grove with uh, meat in it. Okay. I learned something new today. Oysters. Okay, this is the um, other side. This is on the thigh. Do you want the skin? Uh, uh, put the skin with the... Um, the yeah, the yeah. The skin do um, yeah. generate a lot of fat. Yeah, right? yeah, we're going yeah, to yeah, keep that skin as long as you know how to deal with juices. that. For some juices, yeah. Because that That's, fat comes with flavor. Yes. So, mm -hmm. you know... You got to, you want some good flavor, you're going to always get a little bit of fat. Mm -hmm. If you want, if you got some good flavor with no fat at all, it's kind of hard. Mm -hmm. Even, okay. um, when we used to do them expensive filet neons, and we used to cut all the fat off, trim it down, and cut all the silver skin off, and get it down to just meat, then we'd take a piece of bacon and put it around the outside. 
And what the bacon did is gave it a lot of flavor. Okay. And a lot of times. The only thing with that um about that is you gotta make sure, you know, the people don't eat pork. That, you know, they know that they food been wrapped in in bacon. In bacon. Yes. Yeah, but a lot of times you can get in trouble. Big time. If you if you got something I remember I was cooking for um over 5,000 people every day in DIA in Bowling Air Force Base. And this guy used to come down and eat my um, my home fried potatoes every day. And I um, but I, I had them down home, down home style. That means I put proteins in it. And I used to use um, bacon fat. Because we was already cooking bacon for breakfast anyway. We have a lot of fat left. So we take some of that fat and this is, um, yeah, I'm separating your leg and the thigh right now. And I'm going to go in this thigh. This guy, thigh actually only got one bone going through it. And I'm going to hit it on one side and I'm going to go down the bone. Always just take your knife and follow the bone. If you do that, and always when you're cutting, Cut away from yourself. Never cut towards yourself. Always cut away. Okay. To be safe, especially if you have a sharp knife. Mm -hmm. Well, then again, if you don't have a sharp knife, especially because I'm gonna tell you the truth, a dull knife will cut you faster than a sharp knife. Mm -hmm. Been there, Believe done that. that. Yes. Because a, a dull knife, a lot of times, <clears throat> you got to do a lot of pushing. And you're pushing a certain way so hard, you might, when you, if it slip, you're gonna go against yourself. A sharp mm -hmm. knife, if you just move back and forth, it's gonna cut. And that's with cutting anything. So you don't want no skin to can, right? You don't um, want no skin, right? Yeah, because that's gonna give me that flavor. For the can? Yes, the hundred okay. fat, yes. So I'm gonna leave some on Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Especially for the breasts. Now, I, I throw some in there with the breasts. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, because the dress, the breast is the driest meat mm -hmm. on the on the turkey mm -hmm. or chicken. I'm doing the same thing here. I found the bone. I'm just going down the side of the bone and cut it out. Back side of that bone, and come down, take it out right here. Why do you want to take it out? Huh? There we go. Oh, yeah, Pull that up. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not aiming this knife at myself. Okay. Now, these little parts here are a little tricky. These are like silver skin on beef. These are actually like the um, the tissues, the veins, the muscle. Mm -hmm. These right here are like your, um, what do you call them? Like ligaments. But they they um, can make and break your meat because they can make your meat tough because if you leave them on there, when it cooks, it makes it tighter. It makes the meat tighter. Mm. And it makes the meat tough, especially on beef and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. If you got that silver skin, if you don't take it off, or even if you don't take it off, just cut it, cut into it like this. So when you do cook it, it don't shrink up as much. Because when it shrinks up, it makes the meat tough. Wow, now, now, I, now that's mm -hmm. something I just learned today. Oh, yeah. Yes. See, right. see, that's why I wanted fats, the chef to come on here and talk to us, y'all. We're you learning get, today. You get a whole um, a top round of beef, I can cut that, decipher it all the way down. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to leave that on there. Okay. Look, we down one. Oh, I didn't even get this out of the bus there. Look like I found the mine in the ground. 
but this exactly is the thermometer. I can put that over there. And this is pretty much done. I made too much um, fat over here. Just the skin. Now look at that turkey neck. That's going to go with this? Yes. That's a big turkey neck right Yes, it is. You know what to do with it. And also, these are the levels of the gizzards. Use all that and you stop. Mm -hmm. But you know what I'm going to do? Mm -hmm. I probably wind up smoking some of it. So when yeah. I when I cook my greens, yeah, I have that. some smoked turkey parts right. in my greens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, I'm taking this big wing apart. The wing's so big, the... Um, that's how it look like a leg, don't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. And the wings and the legs, they are too tall to fit inside of your quart-sized cannon jar. Yeah. So yeah. that's why we are deboning it. Deboning it. Mm -hmm. I think the only ones you can um, can is like the party wings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, something like that. The regular wings well, too, and, and drumsticks. Yeah, but. yeah, and the um, regular sized wings. Mm -hmm. But the turkey wings and the turkey legs, mm -hmm. they're too tall. I hear that. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the same thing here on this leg. I'm just following a bone. And there we go. I'm pretty sure a little Cornish hen leg will go up in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you could probably drop a whole Cornish <laughs> in, in, a, in a pint jar. Uh -huh. I remember I should cook those things. I didn't like cooking them. It wasn't that I didn't like it. They were so small. And tedious or something? Tedious, yeah. Mm -hmm. You have so many on a pan. Okay. This is um basically skin and fat. She can use it or don't use it. Now this right here, this is gonna go with the stock. Yeah, you wanna take this like this or you want the meat out of here? I want the meat, I want, want the, the meat, meat from it. Yes, please, thank okay. you. And this double, this double bone, it got two bones in it. So. What I try to do is get around one bone on this side and go down this side. Go completely around the bone, like so. Oh, I can do so much better. If I have my bony knife, because it's made, it bends, mm -hmm. so it makes it easier when you're cutting and going around. It's called curves. a deboning de knife? Bony. Oh, bony knife. Bony oh, okay. knife, yeah. Bony knife, mm -hmm. you guys. That's that's what the purpose of it is for, is deboning different animals, fish, chicken. You said it bends? Yeah, it bends a little. Oh, okay. It's got a little flexibility to it. Not as straight as um, these knives. And they much meat in here. Because that's the end of the ring, basically. Okay, let's get, rid of, get, get through this one here. This is your other leg and thigh. Look at that. That's a big one, too. trying to cheat a little bit because <laughs> it puts some muscle in there mm -hmm. and basically if you hit the um the right bone right over top of the um the bone in the thigh right between the thigh and the leg you gotta hit that joint there you go come right apart mm. okay now this got one, one bone in it, and it got a little gristle. And see, this is where I, the part of the back 
where I took the oyster out, right in this groove here. You know I said it was an oyster. They call it. Mm -hmm. in that little cup. That's part of the back. So now I'm trying to get off the back with this one. And there we go. We went off the back. And this is where the backbone connected to the thigh bone. It's right here. And that comes right off. Now, right now, you thigh, you got a one bone to thigh. So you want to go in and run down that one side. And once you get all the way down, do it again and just follow it all the way around. But, but stay as close as you can to the bone so that the meat come off and you have all meat left when you finish. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to leave some fat on here for you. Okay. So you can do the fat like you want. If it's too much, you just cut it off. Mm -hmm. Put it to the side. And basically, that's it. We're going to finish this last wing. And this wing is... Oh, you were talking about, remember you were talking about putting that bacon, you know, people don't eat um, pork, you know, we don't uh -huh. eat pork, but you said you used to wrap that bacon around it and and, and you, it was a, a party or something? Well, yeah, I did. Well, we used to do that for flavor. That's called mm -hmm. filet mignon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you were you were telling the story. I want to finish in that story on Air Force Base or something. Something yeah. happened? What, with the bacon? Uh-huh. Um, the man with the um, home fries. The, the home fries. Oh, 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 yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> that guy, um, Caucasian guy, he was a nice guy. He came out every morning, and he um, ate the home fries. And um, what happened is, <clears throat> one morning we had a discussion, and he was asking me what was in it, because he said, I love it, eat them every day. And I told him I cut cooking and baking things. And he flipped out. Mm. He did a 360. And he said um, that was against his religion. Mm -hmm. And the next day he brought his Bible in and started quoting to me the Bible, which I knew something about anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, after that, I um, everything I did, I posted on the wall, on the bulletin board. Mm -hmm. and, and I explained. What was what? If, if mm -hmm. I say it's down or home, or it is, um, that means it got some kind of protein in it. It might have some kind of meat in it. And if it's not, I can do home fries with just vegetable oil and season salt. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. people can uh, eat them like that. But um, when you cut them up and you, you cook the um, bacon, it just gives it more flavor. Yeah. And um, but yeah, that that was basic. That um, I learned that um, you know, anytime you're doing something for the mass, you got to let them know. You know, you can't assume that they know what's, what's exactly, what's exactly. Automatic. Yeah. I mean, I'm vegetarian, so mm -hmm. I always ask. But a lot of time, people assume. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can assume that, oh, it ain't no um, pork in this and potatoes. But it might be. Mm -hmm. Even some people put um, <laughs> like chicken base and vegetables. Mm -hmm. You know, right? And for a vegan, them ain't vegetables no more. You know what I'm saying? Because right. you got the protein. Mm -hmm. you, know, you take me, I'm a vegetarian. Uh, hey, but he cutting up this turkey for me, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate him. <laughs> I'm a vegetarian, but he, he just don't eat them. <laughs> no, I don't eat meat. Mm -hmm. I'm meatless. Mm -hmm. I'm not 
vegan. Oh, okay. Okay, vegan. They are. They don't. They are. They eat only vegetables. They don't eat no meat byproducts. Like eggs, bread, cheese, mm -hmm. chicken paste, beef, beef, and nothing like that. Which I do most of that. Okay, we're down to the end. This is the last, yes. last leg. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I did it almost 50 years, and I loved every minute of it. Wow. Every minute. Because in, in, in this field, <laughs> there was always something new. You know, it never got old. Every time you're looking up, it's changing. It, it, and the food industry has changed faster than the um, internet. You mm -hmm. know how, that, how fast they change? Mm -hmm. They have some, a new product. Every time you look up, they do something new. A lot of things I've done in the past, like I had um, stuff that didn't get make it to the market. I had some... Um, um, What's that? Stuffing. Fried stuffing bowls. I had fried stuffing. I was doing that in 2001, maybe. 2002. <laughs> but I never made it to the market with it. But I used to do it with my fried turkeys. I used to do fried turkeys. And I offered fried stuffing as well. And um, it was so moist and so good because you cooked it all in peanut oil. So everything came out nice. I had like... um. What four different flavors I was doing? Plain, um, spinach, pilaf with the rice, and and uh, cranberry, and sometimes sausage. And your daughter over here saying macaroni. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I used to do mean macaroni and cheese too. Yeah, but you know, um, I did a lot of different things. So it wasn't nothing. I, I mean, I did a mean lasagna. And I mean, when I used to cook, some days I used to cook 24 big pans of lasagna, like four inch pans. Mm -hmm. And sell all of it up. Wow. 24 pans. And it's 24 orders in a pan. So, wow. And that was when I was feeding them 5,000 people a day. Wow. So, we are finished here. And I got all. Now, this is the. Um, oh, I'm messing up there. This is the final product. This is what you end up with. Is that turkey. All this is meat. Wow. No bones. Awesome. So you can just cut Boneless. it up. You can can that any way you like. Okay, so. And we're going to take this. And we're going to we'll put it in a freezer bag or yes, something? Yes, yes. We're going to put it in a freezer, freezer bag. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So whenever you need it, just put it in there and date it. So whenever you need it, you can pull it out. Drop it in the pot. You Thank know, you. You know what to do. With it. <laughs> yes. It's, Thank you. You're welcome. It's uh -huh. been a pleasure. Oh, wait a minute. Don't go nowhere. Don't don't go nowhere. Uh, fat chef, fat. You guys look out for a cannon turkey video coming soon. So look, look, you guys. Go ahead and go on. Go on the website and get fat so bar um. He, he call him, um, you say mumble sauce? Yeah, well, it's fat soul sauce. Fat soul sauce. Mm -hmm. They, um, it's, he, he shipped all over the country. And Canada. In Canada. <laughs> and there has been a lot of people ordering his barbecue sauce. Mm -hmm. And, um, and there's no additives, no preservatives, that high, no high fructose corn syrup, mm -hmm. none of that stuff. This stuff is clean, you guys. Gluten, gluten free. And gluten free. Comes in a 16 ounce? 16 ounce, half gallon, mm -hmm. gallon. Mm -hmm. So and, and offer the flavors of mild, <coughs> original, and spicy. And that order is the order of the spiciness. The mild is the least spicy, the original got a kick to it. And uh, after bite, then the spicy is spicy. Mm -hmm. And the original, I've been making it over 40 years. Mm -hmm. That's always been a little spicy. Because mm -hmm. back in the day when we had mama sauce, most of the time it was spicy. So mm -hmm. it have an afterbite. But when I start putting it in the bottles, folks ask me, can you make it a little mild? But more people ask me to make it spicy. Mm -hmm. So actually, I got like four more levels of spices too. If you go on the website, you'll see. All right. Well, thank you so much. All right, you guys. Thank you for watching. If you haven't um, subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscription button. I love you guys. But guess what?
I love the most high more. Shalom. Shalom.